Thank you very much. Lehman Brothers, economic crisis. Climate change, the common denominator is one single thing, to me at least, the human factor. I think that's why the arts are so important. And we seem to forget about the arts because everything else seems to be so important. The next cutting edge um, um, results in something, the next exam, the next five star star. I hope that in my 15 minutes with you, you can open your mind and really take the arts into consideration because I think they've been given short shrift. The absolutely fabulous Learning Theatre Connection is a life learning theatre. We are called AFTEC for short, we are a charity, we're bilingual. We are about arts for change. Right, so this statement, I won't read it out to you, all of you know how to read. Extremely easy to understand. Why? Very obvious. You have dates, you have figures, you have these large um, possibilities and successes. This is what Hong Kong is about, and I am worried. I was born here, I grew up here, I finished my first degree here before I went overseas for my master's. Hong Kong is a very quantitative society. It's very bean counting, it's very pragmatic, which is not a bad thing, but it can be sometimes overly utilitarian. And this is where the problem is. What do you want your life to be? Do you want it to be a quantitative life, and that's it? So if I showed you something like this, you go, huh? What are you talking about? The arts are arts, education is education. How have you lumped the two things together? OK, let me go back a bit. Um, it was in my 30s that when I changed my hobby, my lifelong hobby, which is in the performing arts and also the other arts, into my career, why did I do this? I felt a, an emotional need to do this. My first degree was in literature, and you will say, what's the use of literature? You can't find a job, you're not a doctor, you're not a scientist, you're not a politician. Ah, you forget. Novels, though fictitious, are about people. And in novels, you understand not only about human psychology, but also about geography, history, philosophy, science, whatever it is. So the novel actually is the first step to under, understanding the human factor. Um, I did a variety of jobs, none of which I was satisfied with, and one day I decided, forget it. I really want to do something that I'm passionate about, which is the arts. My friends all thought I was crazy, giving up then a very highly paid job that, that could have got me places. But I went, I took my hobby. That's episode one. Episode two, my nieces. They went to a local school when they first started, and I used to look at their homework. And I thought, OK, that's a pretty good answer. Why did the teacher give a big cross? And so on and so forth. And I decided, no, there's something wrong somewhere. So I start look, started looking at education. And that's how I decided to marry the both. So I went from literature um, and then to an education degree. Arts in education is a concept. And I'd like to talk about qual qualitative aspects of life, or to put it in a simple manner, quality. The reason I'm looking at this is because I don't want to overrun. What is the quality of life that you all want as parents for your children, for yourself, and all the young people under 20 sitting in here? You have to think about this, because I think personally a lot of the problems in this world is about we forget thinking about ourselves as, as human beings. We run for the next goal, we run for the next highest honour. And we forget we have a right, a duty to look after each other. The arts in education mean using values, um, using the nature of the arts for the purpose of education. I grew up in Hong Kong, as I said. I finished in a local school. I never went into an international school. I was never very good. In secondary school, my best subject was something that was never counted in the report, and that was organizing events, which is what I'm doing now, which is not bad, I think. I should have gone from primary school uh, and then to university, but nothing in between. I really didn't learn anything through trigonometry, algebra, and geometry. But I learned how to organize events. And I was quite miserable. Uh, in exams until Form 6, where I would sneak into Hong Kong Youth Library and I would read and read and read and read anything under the sun. And suddenly I realized, oh, I have a brain. I think I better use it. So 
Let's look at the arts in education. Why are the arts so important? In Hong Kong, fortunately, we have a, look, a, a lot of opportunities for young people to pick up the violin, learn how to paint, some of the marvelous paintings downstairs, uh, learn how to dance, learn how to cook, learn how to build. It's the intrinsic properties of the arts. But the arts are much richer than that. There are many, many layers. We can look at multiple perspectives. In exams, very often, there's only one, one answer that is right, a single answer, and very often, um, the teacher's answer. But in the arts, when you look at a painting, there can be multiple interpretations. And that is so important, because by giving different answers, we're very empathetic. We understand more. Um, let me give you an example of a few um, of our programs. Smart Youth is entirely for underprivileged primary four to primary six kids. We don't teach them arts appreciation. We teach them how to look at things from different perspective through the arts. We teach them to ask questions. We are always asked to problem solve, but I think it's more important to problem find. So hopefully, when they grow up, they can leap out of poverty because they are able to think. That's actually one of our classrooms, and that is the learning style. We were the first ones to, to create relaxed theater for people with ASD syndromes and learning difficulties. Not because we tick a box, oh, we've done something for the disabled, but because if you look at performance spaces, there are very few for those with neurodiversity. They're not welcome because they make noise, they're afraid of lights and large, huge sounds. We do that so they have a holistic experience. Ah. Yes, we work with medical students year one, year two in Hong Kong U, and we take music, drama, and movement to year one and year two students, and this is a credit-bearing course. This is because, as important as technology and science is, empathy, the human heart, for doctors to understand their patients, not as lumps of diseases waiting to be cured, which is very important, but as flesh and blood human beings who have feelings, who are stressed, who need your shoulder to cry on. The arts engage emotions, something that we don't deal with in our education system. And I think a lot of the problems that we see, even with suicide, is because there is no emotional outlet or anybody to talk to you about anything. Um, the arts play a very important civic role. And this is a village, which is in Lantau, that we had the privilege of taking over last November. And we created an arts stroke science festival, a STEAM festival, in fact. This is a six meter sculpture created by a sister and brother team. And we, could, we used it to teach STEAM. You can imagine all the engineering and the mathematics that go into it. The arts influence the environment and it makes connections between people who generally don't deal with the arts, the villagers, for example, to scientists and artists who get to talk about things. So the, arts, the artistic connections make people understand each other. As I go on, you will see that all these programs that we do have a single common denominator again. There's no digital, anything digital here. It's all about face-to-face -face communication. And again, I think this is a danger of, 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 of too much internet. I mean, I love that thing to bits, but it also kills me because I forget I'm looking at people and talking to people. Bravo Hong Kong Youth Theatre Awards, we started in 2013. We're now in our fourth, fourth cohort. And it's about acting, seriously. You can choose the English stream or, or the physical theatre stream, which is more Cantonese. But more, it's about life skills. What about the values of punctuality, perseverance, commitment, team spirit? Very boring, but very necessary, because we do forget. Um, and these are the very lucky group of young people who've gone through a whole year's training, and they were selected from the London Academy of Dramatic Arts in London for, for four weeks. And um, for those of you who think, yeah, the arts are still really very soft. So we took risks, as we do every day. We did a survey last year. You might not be able to see everything very clearly. So with the third cohort of 1718, we actually undertook, with an external reviewer, all the key KPIs, the key performance indicators of what the arts can actually do. We keep on saying it raises self-esteem and self-confidence, but really? Can we measure it? And in pragmatic Hong Kong, unless you can measure something, people don't 
really believe that it happens. So if you look at all this, and this is all students, which means the privileged and the underprivileged. We give priority to underprivileged students. Oh, by the way, our company, after it works with about 65% of schools that are not as well off as, as this one. And we think it's very important they are given alternative platforms of education. So if you look at some of this, um, most of the, uh, the yellow bars are the important ones. The yellow bars are the, th are the latest survey and the blue bars are the pre-survey. And you will see that almost for all the KPIs, there has been growth. And those that with asterisks, teamwork, self-esteem, English, acting knowledge, acting ambition, are statistically significant. It means that through acting, young people are transformed. Motivation and risk-taking, mm -mm. It took those who managed to go to London, i.e. one and a half years later, to actually show an increase in, in this KPI. And um, that was all about attitudes. So, yes, you could have a change in attitude, but what if your behavior doesn't change? That still doesn't change anything, right? So we thought, okay, let's look at it. Am I in your way? Let's, let's look at it again. So again, the yellow ones and the blue ones. And you will see that finally, motivation and risk-taking have gone up a bit. Now, it's taken us one and a half years to get 23 young people. It's a very small-scale research. I understand it's not a 1,000 thing, which is large, but it is significant. We have to know that through the arts, young people can be motivated to take risks. One of the issues that I have with the local education system, and this is true for all advanced cities and countries' education system, it's, it's very linear. There's only one definition of success, and that's uh, great exam grades. Fantastic. Not everybody is academically inclined. Instead of asking, how smart is your son, can you ask, how is your son smart? Because we really have different kinds of smartness, and that's so important. So this is the chance that we talk, um, and I think it looks um, pretty good. We're continuing with Bravo 4. Let's see what will happen. Um, along the same lines, I think Hong Kong is a very narrow definition of success. In school, it would be exam results. Um, in life, will be, you know, uh, other things. Did I fail? Oh yes, very often. Was it pleasant? Oh no. The reason I didn't do very well in secondary school was I, couldn't, I didn't find my passion. Passion is very important because when you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like going to school or to work. I get up and say, okay, I decided to do this. I decided I want the arts to make a difference through education to young people's life. So I get up because passion in arts and education is my compass direction. All of you will need to find your North Pole, and that's why passion is so important. It need not be in the arts, but you do need to find it. Um, we ask our young people all the time, okay, so what's failure? And as Jeff says, and he is a real person, he used to think it's academic results, and then he realized that it's attitude, that if he, he didn't give it his best shot, he would have failed. I think if we can widen our definitions a bit in Hong Kong, a lot of young people would feel better, that they're not less good than the person sitting next to you. They're just different. But do we have an education system that would help them see that difference? Well, I'll leave you to answer that. Um, similarly, Anna. Anna comes from an extremely good school, extremely good student. She's now um, in, in Hong Kong U. And I thought, oh, okay, this is really subtle. It's success is now about understanding something. I wish understanding could be made into a subject, because then you will see a lot of minds uh, working uh, in beautiful ways, so that instead of having one answer, you actually have 25 different answers, and they're equally, and they're equally good as well. AFTEX acronym also stands for this, Arts for Transformative Educational change. It's not about what you do as a profession. It's about who you are as a person. What quality of person do you want to be? Somebody who can stand upright. I think if you're from not an underprivileged family, can I share one phrase with you, which is called noblesse oblige, 
which in French very roughly translate, translates into, if you were in a privileged position, you should really contribute back to society. And I think this is where we've probably all gone wrong, in that we're there for only ourselves, or we're there for the glory of being seen to be doing something for others. But if we're in a privileged position, as most of Hong Kong really is, because most of us have enough food and shelter um, and education and care, we should think about other people. The arts come in here because it connects you. It reminds you of being human again. It is not that artificial intelligence and robotics are not important. A lot of scientific work will be done eventually by robots. But it, it is the human factor, the value of being positive, good, and, con uh, and, and being able to contribute to society that would make all the difference on how we use a AI um, and how we grow our future for our next generations. So next time when you think about success and failure, when you look at the word fail, don't think of it as something which is negative. Um, I'm quoting something that I read. I didn't make this next thing up. So fail as an acronym means fun attempt in learning. I wish you all good night. Go read a good book and connect to humanity through literature, performing, visual arts, whatever. Thank you very much.